All right, guys, welcome to the last round for Masters here at Unrated Gaming in Norwalk for our 2018 Mid-Season Showdown. I am Regina Angley, and I'm joining Gavin Michaels to watch Alejandro Jimenez and Patrick Smith um, for the last Swiss match of the night. Yeah, that's right. Both players are 4-1, so whoever wins this will be making top cut, and whoever loses will have to take their chances with the resistance gods. Oof, well... That's part of the game, right? And so on your left side, you've got Alejandro's team, which is Incineroar, Cresselia, Salamence, Tapu Fini, um, Snorlax, and that Totem Mimikyu. And on Patrick's side, we've got Tapu Fini, Amoongus, um, Landris, Tyranitar, Zapdos, and Metagross. So interesting kind of like matchup right here. I'm so excited to see that Totem Mimikyu again, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, Patrick's uh, Trick Room answer is really the Amoongus, pretty much. But, um, as we can see, Anthony, or sorry, Alejandro has the Tapu Fini, so Amoongus' effectiveness is going to be limited. It can't just freely spore whatever it wants. <coughs> However, he does have the Tyranitar, which should be pretty effective here, especially if he's able to take it away from the Let's Snuggle Forever, which right. uh, Alejandro already revealed in a previous game. So I'm excited that we're going to be able to see the animation again. It is a really fun uh, thing to watch up here. And kind of just interested to see what their answers are to each other's teams and what they're mm -hmm. going to think going into this first match against each other. Um, so we, like, you know, that, that trick room that we saw last time, that Snorlax never even got a belly thumb off. We, so we actually have no idea if it's running that, which, you know, it probably is because that's what Snorlax likes to do. Uh, we got Incineroar and Salamence coming out as late this time. So kind of an adjustment from what we had seen previously from Alejandro in his other round. And Patrick coming out with a Tyranitar and Landorus. Yeah, so Alejandro <coughs> isn't really setting up uh, Trick Room here. What it's really going for is it's just trying to give Salamence a little bit more time. Whether that's to just uh, dish out damage or go for potential Dragon Dance, we don't really know. But regardless, Patrick's fine with his positioning because he's got two Mons with Rock Slide versus two Mons that are weak to it. <laughs> and, don't like it at all. Yeah, the Incineroar, as we saw last game, does have low kick, so that is something for Patrick to be wary of. But, uh, I don't know. I feel like this is definitely def in Patrick's favor, and Alejandro is going to be the one who has to make the adjustment here. Yeah, and so, you know, that Incineroar is going to have, like, that fake out, like, potential too, so you can at least keep one rock slide from happening. Um, and right. then we've got Mega Salamence with the Aerialite coming out. And so, um, kind of just, I think hard because like flying type moves against these two Pokemon um, at the moment. Right. A it, can, bit it can do damage to the Landorus, not so much the Tyranitar. Mm -hmm. So Hyper Boy's coming out from that Salamence. Again, not doing that much damage. We get one Rock Slide out from uh, the Landorus doing some nice damage to that Salamence. That's a lot of damage. So. Yeah, that's a crit. And Tyranitar flinching because of the fake out. And then we've got the this, uh, the Sandstorm chip damage. So, you know, good. Good job, like, good uh, turn for Patrick getting that crit. Yeah, yeah, uh, well-deserved crit. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's just a matter of Patrick's in a position where all he really needs to do is dish out damage. And, I don't know, um, it seems like what Alejandro is doing right here is just prioritizing getting rid of the Landorus T. Potentially, he has something in back that's really scared of it, but it doesn't seem like he's really caring if his <coughs> Salamence takes a whole bunch of damage. Right, and so um, we've got Tapu Fini coming in for that Incineroar, so we've got, um, so we've got that Fake Out potential again later on, and the uh, Landra is taking a good hit, and the U-turn coming in bulky to nasty. absolutely nothing. Um, so Patrick kind of just like adjusting, doesn't want, like wants to keep that Landra in for later. Which I think, you know, when you have Intimidate users, you want to be able to keep them out and to cycle them in because that minus one attack really does help. Oh yeah, and it, what's so good about it too is uh, you already know that the Tyranitar is going to be able to knock out the Salamence anyways, so really, why bother? Just go for the option coverage there and preserve it. So now, Alejandro has his Mega Pokemon down and he has the Incineroar in back, but that's not doing that much versus the Tapu Fini and the Tyranitar, so it's really gonna be... There's like, there's an Otis on the third Pokemon to really do a lot here. And it's that Totem Mimikyu that's coming out, so we know, like like we mentioned earlier, that we saw that it does have the Mimikyu Z, so we will hopefully see that Z move again. Um, and it, like the disguise is also just really frustrating to try to break, because yeah. it means you're spending more turns to try to take out this uh, Mimikyu. Yeah, the one thing in Patrick's favor, though, is that he does have a lot of spread moves, so 
he can get around the disguise without sacrificing too much. I think if you're Alejandro here, you just have to be really careful about using your Let's Snuggle Forever into a Protect or hitting it into a Pokemon that can just heal back up with a Berry. You're down enough at this point that you really need to be getting massive value out of this. And he's going for the Sword Stance. That's one way to get value. There you go. Scary Mimikyu with that disguise up getting a Sword Stance. And the top of the knee is in comment. Okay, so um, Alejandro going for kind of like a stat boosting turn right now. Yeah, which... no, if pa if Patrick uh, went for the protect on either of them, that would have probably been a bigger deal. But, uh, I mean, as is, Patrick's just fine to just dish out damage. It's not going to be too much, but right. it is going to be breaking Mimikyu's disguise and knocking Feeny into range of Barry if it has it. Or, I mean, you would assume that it has Barry, or if not. There we go. Yeah, there yeah. we go. And so, you know, I mean, Alejandro is still like not a super bad turn. You've got Pokemon now that are like up a couple, like up a stage or two um, in the Mewtwo's case. And so now you've got like this chance to kind of like deal some damage. And maybe it's not going to be the Z move, but I mean, if you've got Swords Dance off, you can still do hefty damage. Right. If you're Alejandro, what you basically did there was you uh, spent your berry and spent your disguise, really your defensive options, for just stats that can let you dish out a ton of damage here. So now Alejandro does have the momentum a little bit, and it's going to be uh, on Patrick's side. He's going to need to just preserve things so that he can deal with the Mimikyu and the Tapu Fini in the late game. Because right now, he's going to be taking a big hit, and there's not too much he can do about it besides grin and bear it and decide uh, which thing is the least important to him. Right. So, Pat, uh, so Patrick switching out for that Landorus and the Intimidate, so it will negate just one stage of Mimikyu's Swords Dance. Still a scary Pokemon to like have right there. Um, and we do see the Let's Snuggle Forever coming out from Alejandro's side, so most likely going into that Tyranitar just to like take care of it. Yeah, the Tyranitar didn't protect, did it? Mm -mm. It didn't protect. So that's, that's just, I mean, this is probably a double sack <laughs> turn for Patrick, or uh, maybe just one if things work out weirdly. But so his last two Pokemon are really going to be what he's going to be trying to clean up with here. We know he has the top oh, of Oh, it went into the Landorus. My bad. I oh, it was going into the Tyranitar. I mean, that makes sense because that lets you one-shot the top of Fini if it uh, decides to stay in. So good call by Patrick there, just making it so that... Uh, A guaranteed knockout on that one. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, what Patrick did there was he let Landorus take the more damaging attack because he knew it was going down regardless. And Tyranitar is going to be able to take a Muddy Water. We know that for a fact. Okay, good. I really do not want to be wrong there. <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, is that Darkens? That is a Black Hole Eclipse coming out from the Tyranitar. That's going to be able to just knock out the Mimikyu. So oh. Alejandro got a little bit greedy there, where he just wanted the guaranteed KO onto the Tapu Fini. But what that meant was he didn't have enough resources available to take out the Tyranitar, and the Tyranitar oh. is very punishing, because what that means is oh oh, gosh. 1 HP! Holy crap, okay, this Mimikyu is definitely way bulkier than I expected to survive uh, that Z move, and to hold on past the Sandstar, like, that's, if you're Alejandro, you're like, okay, cool, I've got this, like, this moment around for uh, one more turn, and it's at plus one still, so. Oh yeah, no, I mean, um, if you can find a way to let Mimikyu survive, then you can get a lot of value out of this turn. And at the very least, you're probably forcing Patrick to go for a double protect. And that's not nothing. You're at least burning his protects so that when you switch in your Incineroar, you can get a free fake out plus something <laughs> off. Yeah. So Patrick is still, I'd say, in a good position. <coughs> All right, so that top of Finney coming back out from Patrick's side, and I, I think, like, it's just one of those things where, I mean, if, if I was Patrick, I'd be like, you know, maybe I wanted that Lando to stick around, um, or, like, I wanted I, mean, I wanted that, um, or, like, sorry, um, if you're Alejandro, you kind of maybe wanted to go to the Tyranitar for the attack. Oh, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you could do that over again, of course, you would attack into the Tyranitar, but, I mean, he there was a legitimate fear of the top of Finney surviving that. I mean, you could say that it's greedy, but I mean, hey, it's a fair concern. So we don't see the protects coming out from Patrick's side, maybe indicating he doesn't have it, or going for some sort of other read. But that's going to be hefty damage coming out onto the Tyranitar and the Tapu Fini. Uh, was it going to be able to... Oh, it's faster, actually. The Mimikyu. Sc Ooh. Yeah, Skull's able to take out the Mimikyu. Okay. So now Alejandro doesn't really have a lot for Patrick's Tapu Fini. Well... And, like, you know, so if you're Patrick, you're just like, okay, cool, this is a nice, like, turn of events. Um, especially since now that, like, Bebensura is there, that <coughs> can take care of it without Scald, and it's, uh, fast, fast Finny. 
Um, and then Metagross coming out too on Patrick's side, so we're doing that as his last Pokemon. And like, I, I think it's like pretty nice matchup for Patrick's side. I mean, that Flare Blitz oh, yeah. is going to be a little bit scary, but... Yeah, this is for sure in Patrick's favor. The one thing he needs to make sure he doesn't do is if he attacks into the Tapu Fini while the Incineroar gets a free attack off onto the Metagross, then things get a little dicey. But as long as he can avoid that, maybe just double into the Incineroar because Fini's not knocking out either one, you should have this. And I mean, I think the big thing to note here is just, uh, I mean, that early turns where... Uh, Alejandro just wasn't able to get any value out of his Salamence. Uh -huh. I mean, he was able to get himself in a position where he could set up with both, and he did a lot of damage, but he wasn't able to get enough out of it. And that's for a couple of reasons, right? Like, I mean, Muddy Water coming out, but unless we get an Accuracy Drop, this is probably over. That is hefty damage, damage. onto So the we Metagross. do get the Accuracy Drop on that Metagross, and Tapu Fini using Moon Blast onto the other top, onto Alejandro's Tapu Fini. All right. Yeah, it's a bit of an interesting play there, just because, I mean, I feel like Incineroar is probably the bigger threat to the Metagross, but what Patrick's doing is he's kind of playing around his Tapu Fini as the win condition. Obviously, Tapu Fini beats Incineroar mm -hmm. in the one versus one, so it's just a matter of... Uh, this is a little tough here because if he goes for the Iron Head onto the top of Fini and protects, that could be bad. If he goes for the attacks onto the Incineroar and it misses, that could be even worse. Right. So uh, Alejandro might still have a shot here. Like, especially because like that Incineroar is in that position to be able to take out the Metagross with one Flare Blitz. Um, so Alejandro's Fini is protecting and the Metagross using Stomping Tantrum into the Incineroar. So and it does connect and we do get uh, a knockout oh, on wow. here. So, Good, so, you know, good for Patrick on here, and lesser for Alejandro. Um, that Finny is around for one more turn, but I yeah. guess another Finny and a better ghost. Yeah, good on Patrick, just going for the nice, safe, stopping tantrum there. Even if the Incineroar protects, because you have the special attack drop onto the Tapu Fini, you know your Metagross can take another hit. So, what he really did there was he just played it safely. He got, it got a little dicey there, but ultimately, Patrick should have this. And, I mean, if you're Alejandro... If we're talking about adjustments that you're making for the next game, I think the big thing is you have to get more value out of your Salamence. I, and I think that's just like the tough part on there too, especially because you've got the two Pokemon that it was really on Patrick's side. It can't really do that much to it, um, and so maybe kind of either if you if you don't get the value that you think you would from match two, you just switch it out for something else entirely. But right. I mean, I think that a lot of this came down to issues that occurred during team preview because, uh, I mean, the Incineroar and the Salamence lead just didn't really cover the Landersea or the Tyranitar very well at all, and uh, his counters to it, they didn't switch in super cleanly either. So I think that Alejandro really needs to tighten things up from a team preview perspective. And I mean, if you're Patrick, that was a lot closer than it should have been considering the advantage you were at. If the Let's Not Go Forever goes into the Tyranitar instead, Alejandro might have just been able to right. win that. So I think that you're going to see adjustments from both players here. Right. So once again, on Alejandro's side, we've got that Incineroar, the Cresselia, the Salamence, Tapu Fini, Snorlax, and the Totem Mimikyu. And on Patrick's side, the Fini, Amoongus, Landris, Tyranitar, Zapdos, and Metagross. Um, and I think it's just kind of cool because, like, you know, we know that um, Alejandro's team does like run a trick room and we know that like Zapdos likes to run Kailin and so I'm hoping we kind of maybe see kind of that play into this but yeah I mean I think it's probably unlikely that Patrick brings the Zapdos here just because it's not doing much against the Snorlax and when you're looking at a team like Alejandro's you have to respect the Snorlax now he didn't bring it that game to be fair but it's still just so scary, I feel like you have to respect It's just it. one of those things you don't want to risk me because if they do bring it and you don't have an answer to it, then you're just, you're just digging yourself You're just hole. done, yeah. All right, so on Alejandro's side, we've got the uh, Finny and the Salamence, and on Patrick's, we've got a Finny and the Landorus. So we've got um, Intimidates coming off from both sides of the field, and we've got both um, Tapus out on the field as well. So interesting adjustments, I think, have been made in this. Not what I think I was expecting. But. Yeah, but uh, they're both trying something different, something a little bit more cautious and focused around the Tapu Fini. Because both of the players have trouble hitting the Tapu Fini, especially when there's Intimidate out on the field. And you can see kind of a mirrored position here where 
Both Tapu Finis are in a position to do really whatever they want because they're threatening the Salamence and the Lander's T so much. And I mean, Tapu Fini isn't really threatening Tapu Fini right. that hard. Well, and um, so what we'd seen from like Patrick's um, last round on stream is that he does like to do like the, the calm lines. And the right, yeah. There's just been no opportunity really for that to happen. So Alejandro switching into the Mimikyu on this. Um, and let us go for a U-turn. So again, like cycling on Intimidates, um, kind of something that I think is interesting to see how people adjust for this. Oh yeah, it's gonna be very important considering that, I mean, last game you saw Alejandro bring the three physical attackers mm -hmm. with the uh, Salamence, the Mimikyu, and the Incineroar. So definitely important to preserve. Um, right now it's just, I Patrick. mean, there's no obvious switch in for Patrick. I think you can see from the time he's taking because you can't let Mimikyu set up the sword stance because if it's able to do that, then you're just basically accepting the fate for one of your Pokemon fainting. So you go into the faster one to prevent that, but you still have to deal with the hard hitting water moves and the ghost type attack. All right, so Patrick's switching in for the Metaghost and the Tapu Fini on Alejandro's side, not hitting the Tapu Fini on Patrick's side, but connecting with the Metaghost and Patrick getting the Calm Mind off on this turn. Um, I would like to say though that like, the Tapus and the trains coming into play. Like, I, I like the fact that we're seeing the Finis more because it is one of those Pokemon that, you know, is hard to take out. Oh, like, yeah. Even against super effective moves, it is one of those bulkier Pokemon, and to have it in this format um, lends itself to a lot of, like, different strategies. Yeah. Tapu Fini is really a slower played Pokemon, so it allows everything else to be played a little bit more methodically. And with Tapu Fini on the field, and it's so bulky and it can negate so much, it really makes it so that you aren't just done if. Uh, your opponent is able to get off one really hard-hitting strategy. So Patrick's Metagross, uh, Mega Evolving on here. So we do know it likes to carry Stopping Tantrum. I don't... I, we see an Iron Head come in from it. So breaking the Disguise on the Mimikyu. Um, so that Mimikyu, just like, it, if it does get a Sword Dance off, um, it can be really scary, but the Iron Head can do a lot of damage. So. Yeah, but Metagross put itself in a position where it's just vulnerable to a double target. And sure, you break uh, Tapu... Well, you break Disguise, but what you're doing is you're giving up your Mega Pokemon just to break Disguise, and that is not an even trade. I think that you have to try to preserve your Metagross at least somewhat there, because as is, you're just missing a whole bunch of damage output. Yeah, so Patrick's meta Mega Metagross does go down. His um, <coughs> Tapu Fini avoided a second Muddy Water, so, you know, it wouldn't have taken that, da that much damage, but that's still nice because of the chance of the accuracy drop on here. Right. Um, and so Landra's coming out uh, for the Intimidate on both Mimikyu and a Tapu Fini. Patrick's Tapu Fini is still a, a plus one, so it did do a lot of, like, really good damage to that Mimikyu. Not enough for a knockout, but... Yeah. I mean, now, now that Metagross has gone from Patrick's side of the field, Tapu Fini is really his win condition. He needs to play to it hard. Um, the Salamence can chunk Fini very hard, and we don't know what Alejandro's back is, but that could also be doing a whole bunch of damage to it. Oh my god. Yeah, so, I was just saying, Mimikyu did not have its Z-move uh, burned yet. So. The Mimikyu is faster than the Landorus, which is shocking, but that is a lot of damage. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be interesting to see which one it hits. You would assume it would go into the top of Fini, which is the bigger threat, but I mean... It's possible that Alejandro did something else? I would think the Landris, because if you can get the Landris uh, back out again for like an Intimidate later, or um, like for the Salamis in the back, and that way you don't have to worry about like any physical attacks. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you are kind of making it so that your Salamis doesn't have to worry about Intimidate. So that's going to be a whole bunch of damage coming out onto the Landris, probably enough to knock it into Muddy Water range. So that will, I mean, assuming that it hits, which is a big assumption, you're looking at a 3-2 lead for Alejandro. All right, and so we've got the rock slide connecting on both the Mimikyu and the Tapu Fini, but, you know... Where there's a rock slide, things this, happen. Oh! Ooh, it went for, he went for the Calm Mind. All right. And I, that's actually an interesting choice because I thought, like, from the way he's been playing, Alejandro seemed to favor um, going for the damage and then going for the spread move. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like if you're, um, with Mimikyu's last grasp, if you're using that, on the Lander's T as opposed to the Fini. Mm -hmm. If you get the damage onto the top of Fini, you knock it into range for a Salamence double edge, which is pretty big. If you're using that onto the Lander's T, you have to be using that opportunity to be doubling into it and go for the knockout there. So I don't think I quite agree with it because now Alejandro Salamence 
it's not KOing the Tapu Fini from here, so it has to take a turn to just protect itself or risk just fainting to a plus one Moonblast. Right. And, like, I think the hard part for Alejandro is he used that turn to Calm Mind, but Patrick's Tapu Fini managed to get the special attack drop. So you right. basically had that turn wasted, and it's, it's really hard, um, I think. Oh, and here we, we have that We do Snorlax. see the Snorlax. So what Alejandro did there was he just wanted to make sure that the knockoff wasn't going to be coming onto the Snorlax. So right now, oh, that misses. That is Ouch. massive. So the top of three on Patrick's head doesn't uh, avoid this turn, but the land reset, which is really important for Patrick and uh, just very unfortunate for Alejandro right now. Um, and we know that if Patrick manages to hit the top of Finney, that very not going to happen. Critical hit on Patrick's side against that that's, Snorlax. That's actually not a bad crit for Alejandro, because what that did was that activated Barry. So right now, Landorus T can't knock off the Snorlax, so you can recycle it later on. Obviously, damage isn't nice, and you would have preferred to just have Landorus T gone so that you could try to win with Snorlax in the 3v2, but you still have the option now, and you could just recycle with Snorlax if you assume that you can take the superpower. So, Alejandro's not out of it, and the crit, oddly enough, kind of helped him. And, you know, we know that Landorus is at a minus one because of the Salamence and, like, getting that Intimidate and then switching out for that, that Snorlax. So Landorus using Rock Slide, connecting with both Pokemon, um, not doing, like, any sort of damage at all. Oh, but getting oh, the flinch on massive. Alejandro. Oh, man. That's just rough right there. Oh, what? Nice. So Patrick picking up the K on Tapu Fini. So right there, Patrick must have just been hard reading the... Oh, that's a oh. Was that a double flinch? That's a double oh, flinch. That's... So right there, Patrick was hard reading the switch into Salamence, so that Snorlax would be able to comfortably take the superpower and the Moon Blast. But Alejandro not going for that, being comfortable in his Snorlax's ability. And what that did there was it gave Alejandro a free switch into Salamence. So now Snorlax can kind of just recover freely because Salamence Salamence is threatening the double edge onto the Landorus. It's right. still not ideal for Alejandro though because the Tapu Fini is still threatening the knockout onto the Salamence. Well, and then Patrick's Landorus is also now at a negative too. It's taking both of those Intimidates. And so if you're Patrick, I think you're going to be thinking like, is it worth it to keep it out here? Should I just let it faint? Or do I want it for the Intimidate later on? Um, Salamence protecting after Mega Evolving, so not wanting to take a Moonblast from the Tapu Fini, from the Tapu Fini right now. Yeah, we could see uh, Snorlax attack into the Tapu Fini slot, trying to get it into range of a double edge, right. which could be very massive for it. And then Patrick, you turning into the Snorlax, so, you know, wants to reset the attack power on his Landorus, doesn't like the Intimidates, and now he doesn't Ooh. have to worry about it because Alejandro can't switch out. Yeah, and Tyranitar is going to be uh, very important for Alejandro because there, there's no attack drops onto the Tyranitar. It's free to just do as much damage as it wants. So Return coming out onto the Tapu Fini is important because it knocks it into double-edged range. So now Alejandro is an interesting spot because the Landorus T can switch in, and depending on how the Tapu Fini is trained and how the Salamence is trained, uh, Tapu Fini can survive the double edge at minus one, but if Alejandro just decides to double edge the Landorus, then his Snorlax can freely set up. So now we're in a weird spot, I would say. Though. Alejandro has the potential to like bring this match back around to his side if he can make a good call on what Patrick's gonna do. Right, he has to get the read right here though, and Patrick also has the option of just protecting the Tapu Fini and going for the rock slide. Yep, so there we go, the Tapu Fini is protecting, so we'll see if that double edge goes into that slot, so goes into the Tapu Fini slot, so which is exactly what Patrick was hoping for, and we've got oh. the Z move coming out from Patrick's side, probably going into that so. It doesn't matter which one it goes into, it's going to do a ton of damage. But if it does go into the Snorlax, the Snorlax doesn't have its berry anymore. That could knock it into range of sand, especially if Alejandro doesn't recover. So we'll see which one. Oh, yeah, so there we go. So the Snorlax on there. Um, and, you know, I guess that, that just makes more sense because the top of any can take care of like, the Salamence. Really and that easily. is able to knock it out. Very nice. So good job for Patrick. Managing to protect his Tapu Fini, making that call um, very nicely. And it just, it's, it's just really hard for Alejandro because now you've got the Salamence against the Tapu Fini who has Moonblast, is at plus one, and another the, Pokemon in the back. And the Tyranitar. You know. Yeah. Uh, what Patrick did there was, I mean, the Rock Slide flinches absolutely helps him and prevented right. Alejandro from gaining momentum. But because he preserved his Tyranitar, he always had the option of getting the Black Hole Eclipse right. off. And what Alejandro needed to do earlier on was he just needed to get a little bit more. He needed to force out the Tyranitar so that he could start getting some Intimidates onto it. Or um, just make it so that the Landorus T wasn't right. so threatening with knockoff. Obviously, Patrick got some RNG in his favor, 
but I feel like he really controlled the situation much better than Alejandro. Right. And like their adjustments from like that match one, like even though Patrick had won that first match, he made some good choices and some good changes that made it so that this match was more uh, like less about like by the skin of your teeth and more like he understood what was happening in match one and adjusted accordingly. And Alejandro, you know, tried and it was just hard because you know getting that double flinch on like both like for your Pokemon, it's just. It's just hard to come back from like at all. And yeah, yeah, very fair. So we will see Patrick Smith in top cut. Alejandro Jimenez, we might see in top cut. Who will probably be crossing his fingers hoping for that. Um, uh, the other people in top cut that we know of right now are Alicia Martinez, Anthony Jimenez, and Gio. Wait, Gio, do you want? So a we Giovanni will... Costa will also be in there and we'll let you guys know as it happens. Yeah. All right, so we will, well, um, you guys will be seeing um, Gavin in Top Cut with a different caster, but thank you guys for joining us for Swiss. Have a good night and Happy New Year. Happy New Year.